going to eat out, you know, going to the store, going to the gas station, just going for a walk. Every footstep I take, I'm releasing the anointing in the ground, in the walkways, in the hallways, in the every elevator I've ever been, I've left deposits of the anointing. And it cannot wear off. It will never wear off. You can never wash it off. That's why you release it into your family's clothing, into their food, in the refrigerator. Every door handle in your house, no matter who comes there, they're going to leave with the anointing on them. This is one of the first most powerful weapons God trained me in. And it's in the Word. And there's, and there's actually evidence in there that it's already been used by Peter and Paul. Any inanimate object you can release the anointing in to a text, an email, a cell phone call, and you have no excuse not to do it because it costs you nothing. Yes. And you will impact anybody, anybody that you're calling or is calling you. If they're calling you before you answer it, say, I release the anointing. And when you answer that, the anointing will go into the person. Amen. It doesn't matter who it is, okay? The anointing, uh, it doesn't matter, male, female, old, young, it doesn't matter. No God, not no God. The anointing will go into them because you released it. Amen. You choose to do that. God's not just going to throw it on somebody. We, it was given to us to carry. We get a deposit when you're born again. And the more you give out, the more you get. The more you use it, the more you will begin to feel it leave you. And trust me, the day you feel it leave you, you will never stop doing it. So no matter where you go, I, I do on the plane, in the airport, at the, at the security, it doesn't matter where I am. I release it into something everywhere I go. That's why I can stand here and release it to the whole room. I can expand my spirit to cover in the inside of this entire room and touch everybody in here without me moving. Amen. That's what Peter did. That's why when it wasn't his shadow, it was his spirit when the, it was so far outside of him from him releasing that, that when he would walk past people, they would get healed. Who wants that? Say, I receive it. I receive then, it. then you have to do it. Yeah. Okay? You, you choose to do that everywhere you go all day long. Just think what you're doing for the kingdom. And you think you can't do anything. It's not about you going to uh, getting a higher education, although I'm not against that. Especially if you're least anointing while you're there. Every, everything that comes to me that's new, it's another opportunity to release that from me. And I go past places, I, I, can, I can release it. I see blue fire shooting out of my hand, going into that place, and then I see the demon screaming that it's hitting. That's what happens when you do it. I'm a seer. I know what happens. That's why I like to do it. That's why it's powerful for God to have seers on the earth. More and more people are going to be operating in that gift until the enemy can't fool anybody. Because you also see what's inside of people. You, you know whether they're a believer or not a believer. You know if they're a weak one or a powerful one, strong one. You can tell. That's what seers. That's why God gave us an anointing like that. I also know the full operations of the enemy. I've been watching them for years, taking them down for years. In the beginning, I did it by just praying, but it was a powerful prayer because I did it in faith. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man or woman availeth much power. That's the other word that goes there. I've done it that way. I have fasted. I have fasted. I've been on a fast now for three years. I've fasted my three favorite things, Dr. Pepper, chocolate ice cream, and pizza. <laughs> that was hard. Yeah. It's called the royal fast. <laughs> the royal fast is the opposite of a king's feast. What is a king's feast? Dr. Eating Pepper, every pizza. one of your favorite things. Uh, yes. And in a royal fast, you lay them all down. It's for the kingdom age. It's a whole new fast. God just told me. Told me that a few years ago. You're going to start doing the royal fast. Okay. <laughs> I knew it was going to cost me something when he, when he said something like that to me. What's that? That means you give up all your favorite things. I'm thinking, there goes all my food. There is my food group. It's gone. <laughs> Chocolate, ice cream, and pizza is my food group. <laughs> I had my veggies, my meat. 
You know, my grains, that was it. My dessert, dessert, and dessert. Gone. You know, I've been eating brown rice and apples. Yeah. It was not on the top of my list. <laughs> it's not too bad, though. You get kind of used to things, but now... It's funny, the ice cream went hard and the Dr. Pepper went hard, but the pizza, when I smell pizza, oh, man, I still love it. I think it's the greatest food on planet Earth. <laughs> and I'll have it in heaven. And the pizzas are as big as a ta table up the size of this platform. <laughs> Everybody sits around it and you turn the tabletop to get your pizza slice. It's like this big. <laughs> Woo! And it was really good. I had some in heaven. I was in my spiritual body. I've eaten that. I've been right next door to the ice cream parlor. Yeah, the scoops are like that big. Oh, it's awesome. <laughs> so God is introducing new things. He does do new things many times, although some people think he's stuck in a box because they don't know him. But there is the royal fast. And if he ever says you're going to do the royal fast, you will already know what that means. You don't eat your favorite things, and that's not all. You don't wear your favorite things. You don't watch your favorite movies. That is really going to touch your flesh. <laughs> because you're laying it down for him. Right? And the more you know him, you'll find out he'll keep asking for things. But what he gives you back, it is so worth it. It's worth everything. Right? There's going to be new clothing to wear, amazing clothing. I keep telling people when I see clothing in heaven, it looks like part Star Wars, star, part Star Trek, and part Narnia. <laughs> Some, a lot of stuff looks like the Renaissance period, if you like that. Yes. Really amazing, really sharp things um, in heaven for every age group, you know, the stare. And no matter what you are, male or female, you're going to love it. And clothing down here eventually will change colors. It will make music because it does it in heaven. Amen. So we're living in a whole new time. This is a new time. This is a new year. Grace, complete, complete, complete. That's what 5777 means. And God would do that if I would look at people sometimes and I would see 777 on them. And that means God has approved them three times. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. That's what that means. Amen. And in this time we're living in, this next year especially, you're going to see major things happen. Amen. Powerful, good things, God things happen over this next year that will become a, set a precedent, a precedent for our life and set a bar for us to follow after and to achieve. So this next year, from this November until this next November, is especially it's going to be really powerful. And I am so excited about it. Because I've already seen it. I've been there and seen it. Does it mean we won't have things still going on in our country? Because this, until darkness is removed from the earth and we have the new earth, we will be dealing with it. But we won't have to fight them. We have help. It's called the host of heaven. And did we get that uh, uh, so that I can show them some pictures? Yes? Okay, in a minute. <laughs> I'm actually going to introduce you to the host of heaven. Amen. Now, if they choose to come through the door, and they may, because they're all outside. Amen. If I tell you who they are, and they walk through the door and come up here, do not pass out. <laughs> It'd be really hard not to, but God, I'm asking you to let them sit. Don't let them fall. Let them see, okay? Because one day you're going to see them anyway. Amen. They will be seen, like you and I, on this earth, okay. working with us. Because a convergence is happening, and that convergence, they've been preparing for it for a long time. They've been, they've been sending a lot of the host, a lot more of Gabriel's group is here. They make connections, contacts, they influence people to give you favor. The angels do all of this stuff for us. You're not alone in this world, and usually if things, great things are suddenly has happened to you, the angelic realm is always involved in that. I know Holy Spirit does a lot, but the angelic realm, that's what they're here for, to help, to help our lives. Is that right? Yes. And then one half, and one, well, one half of us will have, is here to protect you, the host, with the most, will make your enemy 
toast. I'm talking about your spiritual enemy, not your next door neighbor. Nope, you can't, you can't stick them on them. They won't do it even though they may want to. If they're mean to you, they may want to, but they will not do it. It's not in their, it's not within the boundaries God sent them here for. It was not to attack people right now, but I will tell you in the future sometimes it may happen. And I do know sometimes he will give permission in order to save somebody's life he needs on the earth, he will allow them to attack. Like he did back in Israel, remember that? Did you know that? That angels literally physically fought for Israel. And like one angel slew what, like 85,000, something like that? It was a crazy amount. One, one angel did. Yeah. Yeah, so what if you get an army of 100? What do you think they can do? You start. This is all assignments for you right now. So I'm going to introduce you in a few minutes uh, for the host, for, to the host of heaven. I'm going to talk about a few of the things we have out there because I never do that, but some of these are so powerful. The books are amazing. If you haven't read the books, try to start with the books. They introduce you to heaven. The first one especially introduces you to heaven and what people do when they're there. The second one introduces you to places in heaven. But you don't just read about it, you see it. Because I'm a sketch artist and the things that the Father asked me to write about, I didn't choose the chapter titles. I've been going to heaven so many years when they asked me to write that book, I had no idea where to start. I, I, could, I would still be trying to figure it out. Because I had been so many times by 2005 when the Lord walked to the wall of my home and, and gave me a commission to never be, never stop. By the way, they're never stopped. They have never stopped. They never will stop. That's what they said. They will never stop taking me. Uh, no matter how many times they take me, I'll never see all of it. But I have a commission to see heaven, reveal it on the earth, and create it on the earth. And you also are commissioned to reveal it and create it. The witty ideas and inventions, things that are in heaven. God can give you visions of that. He wants to do that. He wants a whole new thing in the marketplace that will connect people to heaven. And why did he pick the marketplace and not the church? Because people buy stuff. They need things and they buy stuff. They want something new. They want something exciting. They're going to get it. Why not take home heaven instead of the demonic or witchcraft? Right? So God has his plan. It's his plan for this time on earth to flood the marketplace with heaven. To build places of entertainment that will introduce people to heaven. They'll have the most exciting, fun things at time they've ever, for the whole family. Uh, movies that they won't have to even have ratings on, but they'll be intense, exciting, funny, amazing. Because you know what? He wants you to laugh. He wants you to enjoy your life. He didn't say hide in a hole. So if we don't like the darkness, we do something about it. Amen. We don't like it on everything, in everything. You know, what you're wearing, what you're walking on, what you're looking at, what you're listening to. If we don't like it, then we need to do something about that. Amen? Amen. And people are always waiting for God to come down and do something. He did. He sent his son yeah. who died, wasted hell, gave us power and authority, the right to operate in the spirit realm, to create things, invent things. Shake this world, execute the government of God in the earth, wear our crown, rule with him, be known in the earth as a very powerful, strong, holy believer, not someone who lives halfway in the world and halfway for God. Amen? Amen. 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 And he wants that visible in the earth more than ever before to the point where people will be excited to know believers. Yes. And then the world will know us by our love for each other. And it has to happen. That's why no one's going to be raptured out. You're not going anywhere. Roll up your rapture up. Roll it up. Stick it back in the closet. You'll be sitting there 50 years from now, having done nothing. Except he didn't even say to do that. He said, occupy. That means take dominion. That means that's an action. Occupy. It doesn't mean sit down and do nothing. Say amen. Yeah. Amen. Another time have opened right here. This is very powerful. It gives you a lot of revelation that some I haven't even had time to talk about. All of these are about two hours long. Some of them are longer if it's a double one. So this is very powerful. 
And then this one is the proper time that we're in, and it's a double CD. It's really long. It's all exciting. It's called the Kingdom Age. If people say, do you know what time it is? You say, it's the Kingdom Age. That's what it says on the, on the, the timeline in heaven. And this says, uh, right here, it says, rule, don't run. Um, I'm trying to see, but I, I don't know what this print, we need to change a print on here, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Unpack and bushwhack. How do you like that one? Yeah. Yeah, I, like I have heard for years, if you step out to do something, yeah. the enemy will bushwhack you. Yeah. Well, he should be running. If you're doing something, why are you concerned? Why don't you bushwhack them back? Because we're supposed to. Christ did not sit there and go, if I step out near that person, I'm going to get bushwhacked. Do you think he ever once thought that? No. no, he didn't, and you aren't supposed to either. Unpack and bushwhack. <laughs> I love this one. Fun is a weapon. Fun is a weapon because when you're having fun, which I hope you are, laughing and enjoying yourself, the enemy can't get one single thought in your mind. You are focused on enjoying yourself, laughter, which is a medicine also, so you're doing two things at the same time. You are totally just undoing and, and freaking out the enemy because you're enjoying your life no matter what else is going on around you. No matter what you're going through or what's happening to you, go have fun. Yeah. Yeah. I'm serious. Then you're like, we better find someone else. Wasting time. It's an insult to the enemy if he's tried so hard to batter me and you're out there laughing and having fun. <laughs> Think about it in your mind. Because that's what you're doing. You're not touching me. I'm not participating. I am not participating with you or any of your plans, nor will I tolerate that. Amen. I am going to go laugh if you'd like to watch me do so. Yes. And he won't want to. <laughs> Prepare to manifest. <laughs> Heaven culture. <laughs> Amen? Amen? And these are totally different ones on this side. This carries a lot of information about the time change, the spiritual time change, the fullness of time, uh, what age we're in, why is it an age, what's the difference between that. It tells you how God even uh, works with time. There's a way he works with time. And normally, when we're in a new time, it's because of an event, it's not a date. Most of the time, 90% of the time, when God's gonna do something new, what switched to a new time was an event, that took place, even, here's a hint, the very end of time, when time will be no more, will be an event. But it won't be the rapture. I know what that is. Anyway, God loves to share his secrets with you. He does, really. And I, I'm not so brilliant that he does that. And it's not just because I look good with pink hair, <laughs> which I had to be willing to do when almost nobody was doing it. And go to churches and congregations and speak to the Baptist. <laughs> Let's put pink hair on everybody and go to the Baptist church down the street and see if they'll let you speak on the platform. Bless your heart. <laughs> it was actually fun. And then I got them to dance and worship. Yay. Woo! Amen. They're like trying to raise their hand. <laughs> And the precious little pastor in Canada that bushwhacked them with me and Margaret, they didn't know who we were. They didn't even know what they thought we were the entertainment. I don't know what they thought. But they didn't expect me to be the speaker for their prayer breakfast. Oh dear. <laughs> 80 of them, not a couple. Anyway, this is called The Supernatural. It's a double CD. It's one of my personal favorites. I get so excited, I have to stand up when I listen to it. I, I, can't, I just can't, I can't sit down. It's awesome. An uh, amazing journey of eternity is un unfolded before you. It's, um, it is. It talks, it talks a lot about eternity also. And uh, these words don't look so hot on here either. Margaret, if you were listening, I tell you we need to change this font, okay? <laughs> it talks about the original supernatural, why you are supernatural, what it means to operate in that. What happens in the spirit realm when you do it. 
What happens to hell when you do it? What happens to heaven? We affect both of them. of him to my soul. So there's many uses for those keys of the kingdom. And these are very powerful. And uh, I have a DVD and CD. And then uh, I think that's all the ones I'm gonna talk about tonight. And so I, I think, um, uh, do I have to take them off? Yes. You don't have to, but I recommend it. Oh, he recommends it? So you know what? <laughs> when I start showing you this stuff, I do not want to stop. You will literally meet some of the hosts, know what their names are, but why they're named that. I have learned that whether it's an angel or a host, by the way, those are two different things. The host don't like being called an angel. I'm really serious about that. They fight, they war, they tear down, they destroy, they shred. The other half bless, they bring blessings, they bring gifts, they bring body parts, deliver messages from heaven. They sing amazing, and they look like us. They're amazing, they're wonderful, awesome, but they were designed, created for those purposes. The hosts were created for one reason, and that's to destroy the acts of darkness, the works of darkness, okay? And they are called the host in the word. He is the Lord of hosts. The host, the angelic army is what appeared on uh, the morning that Christ was born, and that, that the, the shepherds were so afraid it hurt them. They were sore afraid. That's not just scared. They were uh, so afraid that they hurt because these beings are so weird. It's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> they were created to terrify the enemy, okay? So you're gonna meet some of them tonight. So if you wanna give into what God is doing with me, then you can make up checks to River Rock Church and then they'll give that to me. It'll help me to continue to what I do. But what I do, even though I have a corporation, I don't receive a paycheck. I am purpose put all my money back in there so we can do more, go more places. Even though I am a business, I minister. I personally minister to people all over the world. I've got over 300 hours on YouTube for free. <laughs> if you need help and you don't hear it tonight, go on YouTube, Google my name, and you will see it rolling continually. That's why Sid Roth invited me. He couldn't escape me. That's what they said. He said, if we couldn't ignore you, because you were everywhere, even in places we didn't expect you there, you were. I will look at stuff myself. Like someplace I want to go or something, and their video pops up. I want, I'm not even looking for myself, and there I am. And he said, there was far too much out there on you, so we figured we better, better be wise and just let you share what God's given you. Amen? Amen. And, uh, and he's never going to get all of it either. <laughs> but I'll give him what I can on October the 12th on Yom Kippur. I'll be on Sid Roth. <laughs> God arrange that. I'm really blessed about that. So if you want to give tonight, go ahead and prepare your offerings and they'll just pass, the, pass them. Amen? Hey, cat. With the Father, you were accustomed to seeing the angels all the time in the throne room. Uh, you lived inside God. You would ride on the waves of glory coming from Him. Those, those, those rainbow colors are waves. It's not just a rainbow sitting around Him like that. It moves in and out. Sometimes there's one massive wave of color. Sometimes there's several at the same time. I see a lot of teal in the throne room. And obviously when John was caught up in the book of Revelation, that's the color that was outside of God. But he said, I saw a rainbow like an emerald. He did not say it was an emerald. Everybody colors it green. Like an emerald is teal. They didn't have a color for it. It was the green and the blue mixing in those waves coming out of him. It's one of the primary colors in the throne room. 
it's teal. Purple, gold, sapphire blue are some of the most beautiful colors I see. And all the times I've been up there, I see those colors a lot in the throne room. The main throne room. Because there are many. The commissioning throne room, a boardroom with a throne in it, an intercessory room with a throne in it. Uh, there's many throne rooms in heaven. Some outside with massive mountains, with massive gemstones embedded in them, with fire coming off of them. Uh, with 200 foot angels standing around them. I've seen that one. I've seen the main one that talks about that John saw. That had the living creatures around it. They all faced the throne like this. Like here's him on the throne. They face him <laughs> like this. They're not looking out. Although they can see everyone anyway. They have thousands of eyes in their bodies. They walk upright like you and I. I usually see them drawn like creatures, you know, on all fours, and that's not what they are. Yeah. They don't. They're not animals. They're in highly intelligent beings. And they all have very important parts in the throne room. And they cry out continually. And when they begin to shout, it's not like they say, holy, holy, holy. Okay, that's not what they Holy! shake in the throne room and the floor that looks like the crystal sea begins to shake yeah. from the vibration and the frequency of these powerful beings and you can't escape being seen by that you can't the throne is so high and lifted up it's like a structure and underneath it are doors where the souls of people which is what God called Adam remember mm -hmm. when you die and go to heaven it's your spirit man but he still calls you souls Okay, you're not going to go without your soul. You wouldn't be able to think, choose, or do anything. Your soul never leaves you. Whether you go to hell or go to heaven, your soul will always be in you. Mm. Your flesh leaves. Your flesh is you. On the day the dead in Christ is raised, that dead is your body. But not you. You live in one place or another. There is no soul sleep. Your soul doesn't even sleep now. You can play the word of God and feed your soul while you're sleeping. Actually, that's important. You should be doing that. Yes. And scriptures, I'll get it. They're rolling in me oh, and alive in me if I do that. Yes. These are all things you can do. Anybody can do this, okay? The living creatures are powerful. And they're not they are not angels, okay? There's so people go, well, everything's an angel. No, it's not. No, God didn't just make angels in heaven. He made elders. Those elders are not the leaders of the 12 tribes of Israel, and they're not the 12 disciples. These are eternal beings. And they sit in council sometimes with God. They all have crowns on. They look, they look ancient, yet they're young. Their faces are young. Their eyes are eternal. Throne, uh, they're not always on their thrones, though. They're out in heaven trying to serve you. If you live in heaven, they're out there trying to serve you. To be the greatest of all, you will be the servant of all. Jesus will be out in heaven wanting to serve you. Everybody wants to serve each other in heaven. We need to do that on this earth. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Stop judging. Yes. Start serving. Yes. If you think you're going to be great, you better be serving. Yes. Amen? Yes. And so there, there's not just angels up there. There's all kinds of things up there. When your pets go to heaven, they're not called animals. They are called creatures, and they talk, and they sing. They have a barking dog. They will never shut up in heaven. I'm not making this up. Being just as serious about them. They're creatures. Many of the beings in heaven look like what we would call animals, or part person, part animal, but you have to remember, they were there before we were here. They think we are totally strange. <laughs> they are still trying to figure us out, <clears throat> especially why he loves us. <laughs> so there's many mysterious things in heaven. Some of you would even call bizarre, but all of them are harmful. They're not going to hurt you. So when you see these, I'm, I'm trying to prepare you for the pictures. 
I am a photographer. That is my number one gift. God made me. He sent me as a gift to this earth as a photographer. My gift is not a speaker. I was never trained to do this except talking to my siblings and taking charge of them. That's my experience I have. So I'm not afraid of anybody's face, no matter what kind of face you have. I am not afraid of you. I survived my family. <laughs> and being one of the leaders, if you're from a big family, you understand if you're from a little family, you have no clue what I am saying. If you're chosen to be one of the leaders in the tribe, not everyone in that tribe is going to like you. It's your responsibility to make sure they're behaving, not burning the house down, not, not beating each other up, you know, not, not doing things with the past they shouldn't be doing, whatever. Uh, so they don't necessarily like you, but I kept them all alive. The house didn't burn down until I left home and we all moved and it burned down. One of my brothers moved in. <laughs> he rewired it. I'm glad it was after we all left. Okay. Anyway, I won't go into that thing. <laughs> but I survived all of them, and I learned to love them anyway, and understand that every single person is different. And you know what? They all have gifts. They all have amazing gifts. And most of them, all of them actually know what their gifts are. They're not all using them, but some of them do. They use their gifts. It's very important. I am a photographer. I had to lay that down to do this. I could stand in a rusty, a rusty place with all kinds of rusty equipment and be absolutely delighted for six hours taking pictures yeah. of every piece with different lighting on it in different ways and be thrilled with what I produced. Or I could stand in a forest and take the most unusual pictures. You know how they see pictures online, you go, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. I know how to do that because it's built in me. I love to do that. And yeah, I, I'm not allowed to do that. What I do now is I photograph the host. That's not a bad assignment. And God sends them on purpose to me to photograph them. Okay, on purpose. And I used to say five or six years ago, they're gonna be photographed, put out there. I didn't know I would be one of the ones doing that. He didn't say, oh, by the way, you'll be doing that. Uh, but I am. And they're amazing. And I even can recognize them in the sky after having seen them so many times. I can tell my part of the army because when I come to come somewhere, everybody else's army, if they've already got one, is out there. Eric's army is out there. The, this church's army is out there. And they all fellowship. They do what we do. They fellowship. And they enjoy it. They enjoy being together. They share stories. They laugh a whole lot. Telling on us. Because they were there. Yeah, they do what we do. And so they're real. They're real, just like you sitting in those seats. They're not some strange, weird thing. They've existed before you were here. They know where you came from. They know where you were before you were here. They saw you coming in and out of God, riding on those rainbow waves, in and out, as far as they would go, then back in Him, because that's where we lived. And they saw, they saw you. They knew that you belonged to God. So right now, it's their great pleasure to protect God's treasure, which is you. Amen. And in the kingdom age, one of our weapons is the host of heaven. Amen. You can choose to use that weapon or not use that weapon, but it is very deadly to the enemy. It's very powerful. They know where they are. They know what they look like. They know what they're doing, but when you give permission and you give orders for them to pull down a stronghold, shred platforms, trash and bash the enemy, and throw them in a dry place, they do it with great pleasure laughing the whole time. <laughs> because we finally get who we are. If you rule, you have an army. If you're part of the kingdom, you have an army. Down here on this earth, in our country, we have an army. They're stationed many places on our land and around our country. It is no different with the host of heaven, except there's the sent in the spirit for people who are connected to the spirit, who came from God, know where they came from, know what their rights are, want to rule and reign with Christ, you should take that weapon. The word says our weapons are not physical, they are not carnal, but they are spiritual 
and they are mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. They're, right there describes them very well. It says your weapons, it says they. It doesn't say it, does it? No. It says they, your weapons, they are mighty. They is a being. Y'all are quiet. Are you okay with this? Yes. So I'm about to show you some of their faces. Yes. And you'll see them very clearly. My husband has five, well, he says six layers, six layers in his soul. If he ever says something and you're near him, listen to him, because it will be very, very profound. He has thought and considered a whole lot on what to say. We have to make sure God was saying it, and then he would say it. And one of the things I say all the time is what he said to me. He walked up one day and just said it. Hand me a little scrap of paper. God said, start saying this. God didn't give it to me. He gave it to him. I almost fainted. And this is what it was. God does not qualify. Uh, God does not choose the qualified. God qualifies the chosen. Yep. Amen. That's right. I would say that was a pretty good word, wouldn't you? Yeah, just out of the blue, here's the word. And I'm like, I think I'm going to faint. <laughs> and he actually wrote, you know, wrote it down for me. Uh, so he isn't moved by almost anything, which is probably why God gave him to me. He's not moved, not, not swayed, not moved, not pulled off the path, not influenced by anything or anybody. Doesn't show a lot of expression. And I come back from heaven, he goes, well, that's nice. I'm hungry. <laughs> Now, people call me, email me, write me, message me, message me. I, I have a question, just one question. He has never, honestly, never, ever asked me a question about heaven. That's probably merciful, right? Because then I still have a life, somewhat of a life. Uh, even my staff want to ask questions, and they'll follow me around and come in my office all day long. Oh, we have work, we have work, we have work. I have to finish this. It's stuff stacked on my desk. I have 19 clipboards. Well, I actually have 10. Uh, but they're like thick stuff. I'm old school. I still got a clipboard. I know you can use a computer. I'm not that literate about the computer, okay? I can type on Facebook. All those posts on Facebook are my own. I don't let other people do my posts. Those are all mine. Amen? Amen. But, but my husband isn't moved very much by things because he doesn't have a lot of layers in his soul, but he is powerful in the spirit. You can hear from God yourself. You can all get revelation yourself. You can rule and reign yourself. You can choose by inviting what you have to do. You invited Christ. I always show protocol. You had to invite Christ in your heart, right? Yes. Then you invited the Holy Spirit to indwell you. And if you've never done that, you need to do that. Because when you get born again, he's right here walking with you, walking right beside you. But when you invite him to indwell you, he moves in. And there's a huge difference in the power you operate in him when he's here than when he's in here. Besides the fact that he will get in your face all day long. He will tweak you, warn you, remind you of things. He will reveal the secrets of God. He will catch you up and show you things. You want him, but you still had to ask him. The army is no different. They're not going to show up in your door and bring your doorbell and say, we're here, would you like us to be your weapon? Yeah. They're not. Well, maybe in some extreme cases they might, but normally they don't. But there are millions and millions all around us been released for the last, uh, I think, uh, four years, yes, since 2012. Millions and millions. I have seen God sending these hosts to the earth they line our entire country on the coastline all the way around America. And they're all over in the skies. No matter where I go, I see millions of them. And then God revealed to me, they're going to be your weapon. And then I was very interested. I had seen them. I've actually been to Michael's headquarters in heaven. I've been there. It's powerful. It is so bizarre. There are so many bizarre creatures that God designed as weapons. Okay, they're not going to walk around with, with a weapon. Like this one guy I call the Shredder. And when you first see him, he's in pieces about this big. They're all glittery pieces. Then he comes together in the middle of the camp of the enemy who is absolutely clueless what he is. 
he comes together and his arms are like huge, massive arms and every piece of his body are these little pieces of glitter. No, he, he's dangerous, and then all of a sudden a spear, a six-inch spear comes out of that one piece of glitter. Maybe he's going to peck one to death. I don't know what they're going to do. By the way, you can't kill demons, in case you wondered. I know kids say, I just want to slay a demon. Well, you know, uh, they can, the host can slay, but they don't die. Nothing dies. You can't kill spiritual beings at all. But the enemy can be wounded. The host can wound the enemy. They don't die. I've seen them with parts missing before. The enemy army has parts missing. They fight all the time. They can't stand each other. They are, they are controlled by fear themselves. But uh, so heaven's army's already got it up on them, okay? They're smarter. They're happy. They're loved by the one who made them. They're recognized and honored in heaven. And we're using them now, so that makes them even more powerful. We, we give them permission. We have dominion. We do. They don't have dominion here. The hosts do not have dominion over this earth. We do. That's why he wants you to do what I'm about to teach you. And so this creature finally came all together, and he was in this home, and he was like 40 foot tall, and he began to just turn. And went, but he looks really big. He, he looks pretty dangerous. And then the Holy Spirit shouted. He shouted. I didn't remember what he shouted. It was just really loud. And then spears came out of every pore of him, every piece that was on him, a spear came out. And then he began to spin. And the Holy Spirit said, he shreds the enemy's camp. Right? Now he looks dangerous. And he said, that's because he is a weapon. He doesn't carry one, he is one. So God creates things like this to defend us. And he'll send that little glitter piece when we send them on assignment sometimes, this is what they do. Shredder will go. He'll go in the middle of the camp and float around. They'll all drop whatever weapons they have to go up and see what he is because they have something wrong in their brain that they cannot remember. Yeah. They literally lost something when they fell. When those angels fell and sinned and chose Satan, they lost something in their head that they cannot remember. That's why they think they're going to win and they're not. And he'll send him in here, just float around, they'll all leave the weapons. What is that? Look at that, that's awesome, what is that? And then while they're doing that, the whole rest of his being comes together, thousands and thousands of pieces around them. Then he goes, shoo, 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 wow. and shreds them. Wow. Say, that's a good plan. That's a good plan. <laughs> so I've seen creatures like this at, at Michael's headquarters. I've seen many, that they have many eyes in their head. A band around their head with eyes in it so they see the enemy no matter where they are. I've seen them turn into fire, uh, all kinds of things, turn into missiles, spiritual missiles, go through the spirit realm to where the battle is, and when they get there, they turn into the weapon that they are and defeat the enemy, especially if we're praying. Amen? Amen. Amen. Your fervent prayer does do something, but when you have an army and you give in charge of that army, then you're the one who sends them places. Say it's part of ruling. Say it is not worshiping. It's not worshiping. It, is it is commanding. Remember that thing where God said, Command ye me? We're supposed to be made in his image. We have the authority that Christ had in this earth. He himself said in the word, If I wanted to, I could call the army of heaven to fight on my behalf. Did he say that? Yes. Are we joint ears with him? Yes. Does that give us the right to do that? Yes then none of this should be weird. You're here to go home with an army, Amen. not just a good message. Amen. You will have 100 powerful beings that will go with you and live over the atmosphere in the sky of your home. They will follow you everywhere you go. Don't leave them home when you go on vacation. Don't leave them home when you go on a missions trip. 
You tell them, we're going on a missions trip. Amen. Get ready to go. Amen. And then before you leave, you say, I command you, host of heaven, go where I'm going, name the city. You remove every stronghold, plot, and plan, and the enemy that will come against me on the way there, while I'm there, and on the way back. Shred, trash, and bash. Throw them in a dry place. Pull it on the stronghold, and you will go with no interference whatsoever. Amen. If you go to Walmart and send them before you get to Walmart, you won't have anything happen in Walmart. <laughs> or any restaurant you go to, a park, on your run, wherever you're going. You cannot ignore them. Let me tell you, when, you, when you're assigned an army, they will expect assignments. They will expect orders. Right. They want you to say, I command you. Everybody else practice. I command you. Amen. It's not hard. I woke one morning and God said, you're a commander. You're a commander, you're a creator, you're a CEO. Amen. We get new titles in this time, heavenly titles. One of them is commander. Yep. And there's more than enough of the host to go around if every believer did this and was operating this, what do you think would happen to the darkness? Right. Say it would be crushed, crushed. pushed back, push back, out of whole regions. Out of whole regions. That is his plan. Yeah. Yeah. It will change your life. Send them to your children's school. Yeah. Have them pull down every plot and put it in me. Expose every lying deception in the school. If anyone operating with Satan to bring harm to the students that works there. Because these are demons control all these people, whether it's the ISIS, gangs, murderers, criminals, uh, people pushing drugs, pornography, even uh, uh, human trafficking. It doesn't matter what the evil is, they are all controlled by demons, by the demonic army, that you have power over, and these hosts were created to defeat them. And when that power is removed from these people, fear falls on them. Confusion falls on them, because what they've been operating in is gone. That doesn't mean you can kick a demon out of that person, but they're no longer allowed to use those people for those purposes, because you took power over it. Say amen. 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 So I'm going to introduce you to I'm going to introduce you to them. I don't know how it will react on the screen, but we'll see how good it comes out. So I think Rex, uh, who my husband was with me, thank you God, uh, when, when spiritual beings come into the physical realm, yeah. anytime they are stretched yeah. out, it stretches them out. Yeah. Now I actually have, how many people see his face without me yes. showing you here? Does he look like a lion? Yes. yes. That's because he's the commander of the royal guard. The royal guard all look like lions. Wow. But they're intelligent beings. Is one of the living creatures, does he have the head of a lion? Yes. Yes, yes. yes but his body isn't. He's not. His body is not. His body does not look like a lion, but his head and his face does. His wings come from his neck. Not every single angel's wings come from their shoulders. Even the living creatures, they have six. The seraphim have six. Okay, so you can't always even put them in a box. Some, they don't, you don't even see them. They all have wings. Some are just sheer energy. They don't all look like bird feathers, okay? Some I've seen with rainbow, just light. Their wings are made out of light. They're made of just pure energy, invisible energy that you cannot see. But this one right here, I'm going to count on this thing. One, two, three. I found it. <laughs> there. He has a long yes. mustache. I Do you see, see that? It? Yes. He has a very pointed, this is his chin with a pointed beard. Do you see that dot on the end? Yeah. That is an eye. Oh, wow. This is heaven. Okay, I'm talking about heaven. He has two eyes. One and two. There's one and two. Two eyes right there in his head. These are all eyes in his wings. All of them. These are eyes right here. Eyes in his chest all the way down. He's got eyes. In his hand, which is right here, he's holding a scroll. Do you see the scroll? The scroll has a face because it's alive. There's its eye, its nose, there's its mouth. And he's holding the scroll in his hand and he is bringing it to me. That scroll's name is Justice. And it talks. 
Why? Because it's heaven. It came from heaven. Say, it came from heaven. Came from heaven. Say, we should expect this. Because you are supernatural. He's got this amazing collar that comes up really high. This is the wing. See that? There's one wing with eyes in it. There's an eye. Does it look like an eye? It's eyes. And over here is his second wing going over here. These are not horns. All right? And so this is his body right here. He's huge. He came in. He was so big. When he came in through the spirit realm, I have the original picture where he first came in. He's all stretched out. His head is flat and it's all stretched up, but you can still tell it's him. My husband saw him first. We were at these uh, condos where they have a harbor where he can fish. That's where we go on our fish dates. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> <laughs> I've been to every harbor, every body of water, anywhere within probably 200 miles of my home for fishing. And he was coming in, and what we I actually have, he actually is laying flat in the sky. And this is the top of five-story condos. Wow. He, he made them look so tiny coming in through the spirit realm. And this rift, do you see how deep color this is right here? Mm -hmm. This is heaven. This is coming from heaven. Things are coming in. Even here, even down here, there's things coming in. I don't have the other picture with me, I don't think. But out of this rift, which is sometimes it's like a portal, but it's just straight up and down. There are two other angels that came with him. One had a shofar, one had a trumpet that you can clearly see in the picture, but it's not in this one. And they were celebrating because justice is coming to the body of Christ. Yes. And that's that scroll's name, and he's going to give me instructions on how to operate in the kingdom age because I'm a commander. Amen. And this is the head, this person, this guy right here, this preacher, is the head of the army that's assigned to me personally. That's why he came to me personally. He never said a word to me. He was in the sky like 30 minutes. And my husband goes, I think some, this is his response. My husband's seeing this powerful being coming in with the spirit room. He goes, I think there's something over there. <laughs> and I'm like, ah! <laughs> And I start running up and down, running up and down, up and down, up and down. I am so excited. Number one, my husband actually sees it. And I was celebrating because he could see it. I could see it. Anyone who's been out there would have seen it because he was visible to the, the physical eye. My husband is not a seer. He literally saw him like you're seeing him in the sky. And, and he knew that was a, an angel. He didn't know what he was. And the Holy Spirit starts talking. His name is Rex. He is the commander of the Royal Guard that is assigned to you. He is the head of the army. He has instructions for you. And he, I said, well, what do, this is the hand. This is his hand. See, now this is a spiritual being, so he doesn't look solid like us. But this is not a cloud you're looking at. I have many clouds where, where beings press themselves. It's their camouflage. Mm -hmm. This army fights in the sky, yes. not on the ground. On the ground, our army has desert, uh, you know, camouflage. They have jungle camouflage, all kinds of camouflage. Well, their camouflage are the clouds. Yes. And they'll press themselves in the clouds. Sometimes you'll see a shape yes. in that cloud. Yes. Uh -huh. There's something big behind it. Yes. It's not no little thing. But this, was, this is, is literally what his, uh, what his uh, appearance is. This is literally what he looks like. This is not something made up. This is a real being. And so he is a commander, that's his title. And he was bringing me, and I said, what do I do? And the Holy Spirit said, you have to say that you will receive that scroll, or he's not leaving. And I said, I received the scroll, and it was dropped in my spirit. And I will be honest, I don't think I've ever told anybody this, but what? I keep telling Justice, that's his name. I was told, that's his name, he will speak to you. Well, where did he go? Say, in your spirit. The scroll was dropped in my spirit because my spirit man understands. And I said, I received it, right? Yes. So it's in there. And I keep saying, Justice, you can speak. You can speak. I'm serious. I know if God did something or said something, I'm going after it. Even though it was strange, I kept saying, you can speak. You can speak. Go ahead and speak. I'll give you permission to speak. Well, he never said anything. Not, not for like months. And I'm sitting at our little cafe table, and Jen's sitting in the chair next to me, and we both hear, hello. <laughs> I thought she was going to faint. She looks at me. She looks right here. 
because this is the heart of your spirit. She, the sound came, it came from me, it wasn't me. And I'm like, oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably, I may get all kinds of backlash. I don't care. You need to know the stuff is true because it may, it may happen to you. Yes. Amen? I didn't have any angel come and say, I'm supposed to take you and show you things, although I know people have that happen. If that had happened, I would have said, um, I need to test you. But God had already told me I was going to get an army. And so here he comes, and the Holy Spirit's telling me who he is. I knew his name. I knew why he was there. When I said what God and the Holy Spirit told me to do, he left. He was gone. And so I received this scroll. I actually feel it drop in my spirit. But it not, that's all he said so far, by the way. <laughs> we, we were both kind of freaked out. And I looked at Jenna and went, is your phone on? <laughs> she goes, no, is yours on? Neither one of our phones were on. We, they, we hadn't been calling anybody. I went, okay, that's justice, Jen. And she goes, that is so freaky. <laughs> well, let's talk to him. <laughs> Weirded me out. Yeah, he didn't say anything back yet. When, when God's ready, he'll say something. If he says something, I'll let you know. <laughs> okay, let's go to the next picture. So he's the commander. We have commanders in our own army, right? Yeah. We have commanders. We have scouts. We have troop inspectors. Uh, we have transports. And heaven has all of them. And that's what their name is. And that's what they do. Right. Now this guy, I know his name. His name is Inferno. He is a fire angel. He's a fire angel. He's a fire angel. And in his hands, I hope you can see him without me telling you, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Obviously. And he's walking. He is walking on our river. These are like 70 foot high lights on a three mile bridge. You see the lights going all the way down there? This bridge goes across the three mile part of the St. John's River and he was walking on the river. And people were stopping, freaking out, because everybody could see him. They didn't know what he was, but we did. Right. We're going over to my sister's house. It's usually a different way. And the Holy Spirit said, go the other way, or you're going to miss what we're going to show you in the heavenly. Wow. And so we, we obeyed, and we went the other way. When we came down over an overpass onto this bridge, there he was, walking. We've got about eight pictures of him. And he was filled with the fire of God. And then again, the Holy Spirit started speaking to me. He said, he, he is a fire angel. He was sent here. His arms come out of his chest, straight out. There's his hand right there, his arm. And there's smoke. He's carrying a deposit of the fire of God that's about to hit this earth. This is his hair. These are his wings behind him. This is his face. There's his forehead, his nose, his chin. It's a profile right there. And he's walking. He's not looking at anybody. He doesn't care what anybody thinks. He had, he had an assignment to bring a deposit of the fire of God to our city. And on the day of the National Day of Prayer, a few weeks before that, all the intercessors, which I'm one in our city, we got on this wild, uh, like a big paddle boat, um, like a, like, I don't know what they call it, you know, a big show boat that you'll get on with the big paddle wheel. Uh -huh. And they just let us have, I think they only left like the guy who's driving. Nobody else wanted to stay on there. We all got on there, began to salt the river. We kept, started calling the fire of God to come. Wow. We're asking the fire of God to come. <laughs> and God said, I sent him an answer to that. So here he is. His name is Inferno. He is a fire angel. He looks not quite like the other one, but some of them are very different. But that's what he's made out of, fire of God. And, um, and he's actually going to every city in America that has cried out for the fire of God. And he's bringing a deposit and leaving it for what is about to hit this earth. Amen? Amen. So let's go ahead and go to whatever's next, whatever's next in that file. I think it's um, Piper. Can you see that Scottish face? Yes. I'll help you. Here's his eye with the pupil in it. This is his nose. Here's his beard right here. He's got a tan like a Scottishman. There's the plume right there. His name is Piper and he inspects the troops. And he doesn't look real friendly, does he? No. Well, he doesn't want them to think he's their friend. He's to make sure that they're all in line and in order to go to battle. And he looks Scottish. And his name is Piper because he actually has a pipe, a little pipe flute, that he'll begin to blow that. And because um, Trooper has already been there, Trooper is a troop transport 
which it, it actually carries the troops inside of himself. When he comes down through the atmosphere, he looks like a cloud. Then his form takes place. He opens himself up. You can see a stairway from heaven, and you can see them coming out, and I have a picture of it. Uh, let's go ahead and see the next one. You like these? Yes. I told you they were real. You can take this to any place and get a print, and they will tell you that was not photoshopped. Because our office max freaks out every time I come to get pictures printed. Uh, yeah. One of them got saved. This is Trooper. He has a big grin on him all the time. Some of the armies see this face. I, I know this is a head right here. Behind him, they are already starting to gather outside of him. This is his eye, this is his mouth. Right there, it looks like almost like a beak. His head, there's his eye, there's his mouth. This is his shoulder, his hand is like this. His hand looks like this, like this. And these right here, in here, inside here, it looks like a stairway right inside of him. He opens himself up and you can't see really good just because this is dark. But out of him is coming, and there's one, it's a massive head. This is an angel coming out down here. He's releasing the troops. These all along his back, hanging around, there's a face right there. You need to, you need to go to the host ID workshop. I might do one the next time I come back. Because you'll go outside, you'll be able to know exactly where they are in the clouds. And so this is Trooper, and he, he transports the troops. When the army comes all the way out of him, then Piper comes to inspect them. Because we have all of these, all of these terms of these people and their different levels of authority in the army of heaven, we have those same things in our army on earth. And so this is Trooper. I've seen him probably like five times in the sky in different places where I was. And I knew, I even have a picture of a cloud opening and him coming out. And then when it's, he's out and it's clear, he's riding on the head of an Aragon, which looks like a dragon that belongs to God, it's a member of the army, it's a creature, they're called Aragons in heaven. You can see him riding on, on his hat, trooper, with all the troops with him. This one is a character. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, show them scout. We have scouts on this earth, and God has scouts. They have scouts in Michael's army. And they have one big guy in the front, and one in the, I told you they were creatures, one big guy here, and one in the back, what do they do? They spy on the enemy's camp. Do they need to? No, because God knows everything. Does God like to do it? Yes. And so does Michael. Whatever this, this being records, and um, whatever this being records is shown directly into Michael's headquarters, so they know all the activities of the army. And the thing is, they still don't get it that this is a host. I mean, the demonic army. It's clueless that this is, an, is a, one of the hosts hiding in the clouds. And... This is its head. Its whole head has one big eye right there. This is a mark. God puts marks. All the tribes of angels have a mark that defines them. These are his wings up here over his head. This is its hair. Is it beautiful? See the glory. I didn't do anything to this picture. This is exactly what it looks like. This is its hand on his chin. There's its nose. There's its mouth. There's its chin. And it's looking at, and there's a recording device right here in its eye. It is recording the activities of darkness. Is that awesome? So this is a scout for Heaven's Army. And they're out there looking to see what's going on in certain areas. Wherever there's a lot of destruction, like wherever the ISIS is or stuff like that, any demonic activity that is an organized activity controlling things, the scout will always come and spy it out. But guess who has the right, who has the authority to do something about it? I want you to yell, we do. We do. Yeah, it's our job to deal with the darkness. Because he, Christ, gave his power over all the power of the enemy. Why would he say that and not expect us to do something? Amen. Say it's called ruling. ruling. If you rule, if any king rules and they have a kingdom, do they have an army? Yes. Yes. Say yes. <laughs> Every movie you've ever watched. Fantasy, non-fantasy, documentary. If it's a kingdom, there is an army attached to that kingdom, and the same thing goes for us. We're supposed to be operating in the kingdom. Jesus talked about it all the time, the gospel of the kingdom. So there is an army that is assigned 
uh, many armies actually, and this being filled with the glory of God, they really look that bright if you ever saw one in person, they really do look that bright. And they have colors sometimes around them like this. Uh, but this one is a real scout. I didn't even know what it was when I took the picture and the father said, I want you to blow it up and look at it. I'm gonna tell you what it is. Well, I could see what it was. Then he began to tell me what it was and what its purpose was. So that is that one is scout. I don't think, is there any more? I don't think so. I think that's it. So we're done uh, educating you. Wow, that's cool. Amen? Amen. <laughs> and so there is a real army like we have here, but they're smarter. Okay? They're not going to get killed. Aren't you glad? Yes. And they're very good at what they do, and they've been waiting for centuries for this time on the earth for us to understand that they are one of our weapons. And so if you want to have an army, stand up. This is your education. There's really nothing else I can tell you in the scripture over and over again where it talks about, I think Isaiah 13, where it talks about the captain of the host goes to the far ends of heaven to gather the army to fight on behalf of Israel. That's in the scripture. Yes. That's because Michael's headquarters is, is not a tourist place in heaven. There's too much activity going on, a lot of coming and going in all shapes and forms. These beings, are, I saw 200 foot high barracks as far as I could see by Michael's headquarters, which is this 500 foot castle surrounded in dark clouds of glory. And uh, he is over the army and the Lord is over all of them. The Lord of hosts is one of Jesus' titles. And he wants you to know he made provision for us on this earth. We're, we're not weak. We're not unprotected. We, we actually have authority given to us by him personally in the word of God. Amen. Amen. He doesn't want you clueless. He wants you to have understanding. It says, in all your getting of wisdom, get understanding, which is knowledge of the Holy One. Right now, you just got understanding. Amen. Say amen. amen. So I'm going to read it just like I did with the soul loosening. I'm going to share with you what the Father had me do. I knew these beings were all over in the sky. I saw them. And when he, and when he finally said, uh, if you want this army to fight for you, you're going to have to invite it. And he told me the same thing. You invited Christ. You invited the Holy Spirit. You have to invite them. You have power over the enemy. And you have the right to command them. But you still have to invite them. They're not just going to show up and do it. They do sometimes do battle in the heavenlies over regions. Mm -hmm. just, in the, just normally they will do that. But as far as personally... You have guardian angels. We, we still going to pray. We're never going to stop praying. Don't ever stop praying. Okay? That is still communication. Pray in tongues. It's even greater. Amen. If you don't have tongues, you might get them tonight when I lay hands on you. Yeah. You need to pray in tongues because the devil cannot understand it. It is a perfect prayer. And if you pray off and on whenever you want to, you will build up your faith. Yes. Because you're speaking yes. heaven's language and it's going in your soul. This is how important this is. We, a lot of people have abandoned the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. Don't do that. It's scriptural. You need to do it. It's still for today more than ever, okay? So I had to invite this army and I was in my encounter room and I have this one CD that is for like, it's two hours and for, I guess, most of the two hours I hear lions breathing. I had that before I knew about the Royal Guard. I was about to invite, invite the Royal Guard into my life. And this CD was going, had been going and going. You hear these lions breathing with this powerful music in the background. It just gets me undone. I'm in there just waiting. And I have my staff. I have a staff. Staffs are awesome. Get one. Because when you pray and declare, you can hit the ground. And when you hit the ground, there's like a cosmic shock of the glory that goes on everywhere and it terrifies the enemy. He knows something is about to happen in the spirit against him. Yeah. Staffs are very scriptural. Yeah. Just get one. If you have to make it, make it. But get one and when you pray, you declare with it, you hit that staff. Amen. Go outside and do it too. My neighbors already know what I am. They, they, they either like me or they're afraid of me. They don't know what to think. <laughs> but that doesn't stop me. I don't do it on purpose. I wait till like three or four in the morning. I actually have a mat in front of my door that says, heaven is welcome here. Mm -hmm. A doormat. I am serious. Okay, if you're serious about connecting, make sure you write it down and put it on something. And I'm standing in my encounter room waiting. I was waiting for them to show up in the, 
And the, and the father said, you must invite them. And I'm like, he said, say it. Say it. Say I invite you. And I went, I invite the royal guard. And the moment I said that, on that CD, the lions roared. And through the wall of my house walked these lions with crowns on them. These creatures that looked like lions, one after another, with crowns on, began to walk. They didn't even look at me, and I was inviting them. I thought, maybe they might say hi. I don't know. They didn't say nothing. They just walked through the wall of my home and have been with us ever since. Uh, everywhere we go, they're there. But that's not even counting the other army. Okay, I've got 100. I now have 40 million. You know why? Because I don't let them sit around doing nothing. I am purpose and strategic about where I send them. If you watch television, you better be sending the army. Yeah, yeah. If you want to watch the news, you better be using them, not sit there doing nothing. Yeah. Okay, if you're going to receive reports of what the enemy's doing, you do something against it yourself. Yeah. So we're going to invite them. You have to choose that and say, Father, Father, I choose as an act of my will. I choose as an act of my will. To invite. Invite heaven's army, heaven's army into, my life into my life as one of my weapons, of my weapons because they are mighty, they are mighty to the pulling down of my stronghold. Amen. Amen. Okay. That, that's the first part. That's it. Everyone now. Right now, your army's been waiting outside. You now each have a hundred. If there's five members of the family, you have five hundred. It isn't one per home, it's one per person, 100 per person that will go home with you. And when I was on Elijah List conference, the leaders that came to check me out all invited that army to go with them. And the next day they saw them over their home, they were freaking out. They were taking pictures of them. Oh my God, look at, look at this. Can you see the eyes? Can you see their heads? Can you see them? Can you see them? Can you see these guys? And that was when it was forecast that it would be a cloudless sky. So here's the forecast, no clouds today, and yet here are these beings over their home that they're taking pictures of. And now they all know, this is real, I'm sending them places. So when you start going outside your home, look over your home, you'll start to identify faces in the sky, beings in the sky, and when you go to the store and come out, look up, they'll all be up there. So you've invited them, so now we do the second part. We're gonna send them on an assignment. Yes. And remember, you are not gonna say, would you mind please doing this? Yes. They, they don't understand that because no general in our army is gonna go up to the division and go, excuse me, would you mind going over there and attacking them? <laughs> they wouldn't be a general very long, would they? No, they bark orders. And they do it. And when you give them orders in about five seconds, it's done. You don't wait a half an hour. You don't wait a day. They go and they do it. They come back for their next assignment. And if you wait too long, you're going to look up and they're all going to be staring at you like this. If I, if I miss even half of the day, I'll come outside and they're all like this staring at me. They're behind me. <laughs> or, or they photobomb our pictures on purpose. <laughs> yes. And then I give them their cheer. You're the host with the most. You make the enemy toast. Yeah. I taught them how to wink. <laughs> Which is kind of weird because they don't have eyelids. Oh. I asked the father, can I teach them to wink? Because they don't have eyelids. But can I teach them? Go ahead. And I'll come outside and their faces like mashed together. <laughs> With like one eye partially open and go, you're doing a good job. <laughs> I had a friend recently who died and went to heaven. And I have heard him several times say, don't you ever stop encouraging. He's talking about the host. Don't ever stop encouraging them. Don't ever stop doing that. Okay? You honor who they are. You recognize what they have done for you. And it blesses, blesses, blesses them. Because most of the time, they're not even mentioned. They're not even, 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 even if, you're, if you're a guardian angel, protect your save your life, please say just thank you. Yes. It's okay to say thank you, okay? No different than you thanking the firemen, the policemen. If you say thank you for your service, we should thank them, right? Yes. So now we're going to send them on a mission. And the first place we're sending them is to pull down strongholds around our family in our home. Yes. Yes. 
And this is, and I, I would encourage you to do it the way God taught me to do it because he's not wrong. Some people like to adapt it, but they will absolutely listen to these words because of the words of Christ. Amen. That I have power over all the power of the enemy. So before I send them somewhere, I say, I take power. Let's say, I take power, I take power. over all the power of the enemy, the of the enemy. coming against, coming against me, or my family, me or my family in any way. In any way. I, command you, host of heaven, I command you, host of heaven. You go right now. You, right now. you pull down every stronghold. Every plot and plan of the enemy against me or my family. Shred the demonic. Shred the demonic. Trash, them. Trash them. Throw them in a dry place. And tell them I sent you. And they've left. Because you sent them. And it feels good to take authority, doesn't it? Yes. Instead of sitting here thinking that we are weak, we are helpless, we know Jesus loves us, but, but what is he going to do about this? He already did it. Yes. He died, he went into hell, wasted hell, showed them that you cannot have any power over a righteous person. You have no, if there's none of the enemy in you, there was none in Jesus Christ, if there's none of them in you, you have absolute authority over them. If you go play in the enemy's camp, you're giving them ammunition. Okay? And you can specifically say, if you have people, like kids in college, send them to the college to pull down the strongholds that would be trying to tempt your children or influence your children. You know, there's gangs in your city, send them to pull down the demonic, controlling the gangs and then they'll disperse because they will have no power to operate. Right. If you see uprisings in other countries, send them, all right? If the weather is messing up or it's about to be bad, by the way, you can take authority over any of that turbulence that you experience when you come into Reno. Right. Our plane is starting to shake and the person next to me said, oh, this is awful, I'm like, it's gonna stop. And I said, I am over the weather, not under the weather. Yeah. I have authority over all the air currents. They don't have authority or power over me. And I command the host of heaven to go in there and shred the demonic controlling or trying to operate in those air currents in any whatsoever. And I commanded it to stop in about three seconds. It was on. Amen. Because Jesus had authority over the weather, correct? Yes. We're supposed to have authority over the weather. Yes. So now you have an army. You sit down. You can make even a list of where to send them. Other family members, unsafe family members, pulled down the strongholds that are trying to control your family members. People at work, the job where you work, take authority everywhere you go. Don't tolerate the enemy anywhere. I get up in the morning and I do that. If I go somewhere, I do that. People go, that's exhausting. No, it's not. <laughs> it is called ruling and reigning as a lifestyle. Yes. Operating in the kingdom is a lifestyle. Yes. Amen? Amen? So sit down. Amen. 